Welcome back to The Art Show. I'm Ryan The Art Nerd. And today, we're going to talk the classical period. The first time we're going to talk about archaic Greece. This time we're going to talk about a period that was more archaic Greece, that was more the Greco-Persian Wars in 449 BC. And the first time we're going to talk about archaic Greece, we saw a few elements. It was pottery. Pottery, we're going to talk about black figure pottery. And we said that in black figure pottery, we do the, the, the layer of slip and then we chip it away to reveal the patterns. And now in classical period, we talk about red figure pottery. And red figure pottery is we do a layer of slip camel over the pot and then with a brush, we paint the details. And thus, ladies and gentlemen, a lot more fluid, a lot more dynamic and starting to become naturalistic. In classical, in the classical period, had the naturalism was very prevalent, and I call naturalism is realism. Realism is something different, and uh, we see had naturalism in, especially in the pause, the kunuakfin biha sculptures tawana, and simuha the contra posto pause, and had the pause, the contra posto pause was developed in the fourth century BC. And we see in it a few elements. The first element is the cut line that we have between the shoulders or the shoulder line. We see it always a little bit inclined to the side. Second is the line that is not on the hips or the hip line, and it's always again inclined to one side or the other. And the, and the third element is the legs. We see in the legs, in we have always one leg that is uh, fully uh, taking on the weight of the sculpture and another leg that is relaxed and this contrapposto camel is supposed to give us a dynamic view of the sculpture it gives us an S-shaped silhouette to it Moving from sculpture, we can't talk about the classical period but we can't talk about classical architecture When we say classical architecture, we mean the classical orders but first of all, we should know how the classical orders. How the classical orders are elements that are decorative mostly. Neither known for a very simple, very primitive building system, a small post and lintel system. That's why when you see how the stone hinge, you should believe the vertical columns are called posts, and lintels are the horizontal beams. And then the classical orders, probably they were a decorative system. And we distinguish three main orders. Bon, okay, many others. We're going to ignore the Tuscan and we're going to ignore the composite. Hanarkzu ala tlata, the main ones that are Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. And that in every order, it's always divided into three. The pediment, the entablature, and then the column, or it's also called the shaft. And the pediment, because the pediments are not part of the order. The pediments are the triangular shapes in Shufu Hon Fok Greek temples. And we're going to focus on the entablature and the shaft. Hell orders are governed by certain mathematical rules, as Mohon, the rules of proportion. Had the rules of proportion were based on classical Greek temples and at first were recorded by an art historian and an architect Esmu Vitruvius. He's a Roman uh, he's a Roman architect. And had the proportions the bottom the tip the pediment. And first of all, the example the Doric. To do the Doric order, for instance, Nahdu Lespas, Min the surface from the ground that I know has a stylobate, Hetal Bidayata the pediment. We divide it into ten equal parts. Wahdamal parts hadik and smuha the diameter and filhaqiya the diameter ta the column tan. And then starting from the top, nahdu two parts or two diameters, who make kununa the entablature. I said Mubila but the entablature fi had three parts. The first part is the architrave and jaya half a diameter high. It's usually empty, ma fiha wal. And this pass libqanna naqsmuh ala zuj. Ta'tayna three fourths and three fourths. The first part is the frieze. And the frieze had you like in shufu han shufu believe fiha alternating rectangles and squares. The, for the rectangles as mahom triglyphs. And kima as mahom yandiki, there are three glyphs, we let three vertical lines and the part is the metope and the metope is usually rectangular usually is half a diameter 
And the metope hadiya usually has relief sculpture, as we see on the example to the right, a uh, relief sculpture from the British Museum. And the last part of the entablature is the cornice. Hadiya the cornice, we see it has a details and molding. And that details and molding, how much we can do them? We have the base unit, which is diameter, which is one part. We have to have 16 equal parts, and we have to have them minutes. هادو مال مينيت استعملوهم as small units of measurements actually مام هاد المينيت زادو قسموهم but هاد المينيت نستعملوهم as small units of measurements باش نقيسو كامل the molding بصح today in this video we're gonna skip over them and we're gonna move to the second part اللي هي اللي نعيطو لها حنايا the column and the column في الحق متكونة من زوج parts الأولانية is the capital and the second is the shaft the first one the capital فيها half a diameter تاني and it has three parts the abacus, the echinus, and the neck. Can you see in the shaft? Can you see it's not a parallel cylinder? معناتها من فوقا جاي صغيرة شوية على من تحتا. من فوقا it's seven eighth of diameter تعال تحتا. And the diameter تعال تحتا is actually the base unit تعال اللي بعزينا كامل the structure تعال عليها. And had the tightness on the top, midna what is called the intasis. Had the intasis when we look at it, it gives a sense of rigidity and strength to the shaft. And after the Doric, we're gonna move to the second order, that is the Ionic. And متخافوش, we're not gonna go over all the details. The difference between the Ionic and the Doric is first of all in the capital. The Doric capital, قلنا, it's very simple. The Ionic capital, فيها scrolls shapes. We learn some more on tiny volutes. And tiny, the Doric, ما فيهش إمباز من تحتا in the shaft which means the shaft تانا تلسق ديالك تمو in the stylobate but the ionic has a base that it shows as if the column is a little bit melting into the base تانا and then the Corinthian the Corinthian is the most decorative the most extravagant for had the columns we learn in the classical orders in general and we see that the capital تاعو first of all كبيرة على the capital تاع the Ionic and the Doric the capitals تاعهم قلنا فيهم half a diameter actually the Corinthian mean that نلقاوها يلحق حتى one and a half of a diameter and نشوفو بلي فيه three rows of acanthus leaves the story of acanthus leaves goes as a Greek girl who died and داروا her belongings كامل in one basket فوق the basket حطوا حجرة تاع الخام باش الناس ما يقدروش يجيو يسرقوا منها. And من تحتها كانت كاينة an acanthus leaf. هاد الacanthus leaf كبرت فيكو ذا باسكت فوقها دخلت in the basket وخرجت من الطروف of the basket and thus the architects and the sculptors were inspired by it and made the Corinthian capital. We also see that atop the acanthus leaves there is small volutes يشبهون تاع the Ionic and also this one the Corinthian tani has a base as I said it's the most decorative and the most extravagant قلت من الأول بلي اللي درنا هاد proportions is Vitruvius I said he's a Roman architect he wrote 10 books about classical architecture and we've had the 10 books he described the Doric as the most masculine of the orders and the Ionic and the Corinthian were more feminine and slender. And we see in the common depiction to Homin Shufu Bli the Doric is usually represented smaller than the Ionic or the Corinthian. And Philhaq this gives a misconception to the classical orders. The Doric Makanj Sreer Allah the Ionic or the Corinthian. The Doric is a lot thicker than the Ionic and the Corinthian. And we see in the corrected image the thickness of the Doric shaft and we see also the slender and elegant nature of the Ionic and the Corinthian. Had the measurements had proportions were all based on classical Greek temples but classical culture throughout history was adapted and there were many revivals. The first one is a more classical revival and some of the Renaissance and we're gonna have an episode about it and the second one is neoclassicism and we will have an episode about it as well. And for had revival movements, the proportions haduma were adapted according to the taste and the opinion of the authors liktbuam. So we see many measurements, many different proportions for the same order. But the one goal likan nabinat hum kamil 
هو انه هاد proportions are made to give a sense of elegance into the structure but also باش تعطينا a standard in making had the structure so that no matter the height of the column the proportions tell and you can do exactly the same on classical architecture we're gonna end today's episode and in the next episode we're gonna explore hellenistic greece and we're gonna explore the history of one of its greatest rulers if you're interested into more details about the classical orders today's this video will, will be published i will be sharing on my instagram story details and proportions to all the classical orders meaning the ionic and the corinthian what am i supposed to say? click share and subscribe like share and subscribe yeah like share and subscribe and share it with your friends okay yeah i hope you enjoyed today's episode if you did like it and share it with your friends leave all the questions or the comments below stay safe have a good one